Welcome to Living With The Tide guys. Today I'm going to talk you through our gaff rig. And we're going to start with the, the mizzen back there and then we'll move on to the main and I'll show you the staysail and jib as well. So we'll go back that way. So the first thing I of course do is these two sitting cradles. I've removed those so that it's uh, now free and I leave it a little loose, a little loose like you would a uh, normal mainsail. So as we put it up, it can uh, go up smoothly. The uh, next thing we're gonna do is take away the uh, sail ties. As you see, we uh, sail tie to the gaff, not around the whole one. There's different ways of doing it, but this is the way I find is neatest. So as you can see the sail ties around and then you pull the gaff up and it makes it all nice and tight looks quite nice like that. I have a bit of trouble doing that with the main because it's still new, it's still getting its shape. The mizzen goes away quite nicely so I'll remove these and then we can t send it up. So that's the sail ties off. As you can see it's quite um, slack at the moment on this sheet. That's because without the uh, tension that was in it's allowed the, the boom to move around more. Um, it's of course held on the topping lifts at the moment but when we put the sail up that takes over and we can slacken the topping lifts uh, off so it doesn't interfere with the shape of the sail so the next thing now is just to hoist it up so these are the two halyards we've got the throat here and the peak this side throat being the one it's uh, as Paige brings it up in one moment me there we go that's neater throat being this one the closest to the mast and the peak is the ones that are sat further out and it's rove back and forth so the halyard's actually just one halyard but it comes down a few times and uh, we'll hoist them together what we're trying to aim is we have to keep the peak higher than the throat because of this hinge here as you see it move if the uh, peak if the throat goes higher than the peak it can actually cause it all to jam up and jam in place and then it'll uh, get stuck and we'll have a bit of trouble so we always keep the peak higher than the throat so I'll start sending it up so we've got the two here, throat and peak, and this is really easy, um, the, the mizzen had hardly any weight. So what I'm going to do first is pull the peak up a bit, as, uh, as you can see it goes up a bit, take it to about there. As Also because of how it's rove, the, uh, the throat is a lot shorter than the peak, so as I start pulling up the throat will catch up, so I've just got to be careful. So if we send it up like this, as you can see already you can see the throat's catching up with the peak but I've set it up so I can get all the way to the top there. So that's now the throat is uh, going tight. So I'll just tie the peak off just quickly and we'll sweat in the, um, the throat so it's all nice and tight. See, it's still loose. So we'll just put it on like this and use my weight to pull it down so it's nice and tight. A couple of times, there we go. Now put it round again and then we'll tie it off. Locking figure of eight there and then we'll leave that for now. And you see that's made it quite tight. You can't get it bar tight like you can with winches, but it's tight enough for a gaff. And now we just have to finish off by uh, sending the peak up. So as we send it up, you see it's uh, closing the gap and you'll see it go tight. So as you see, there's no creases at the moment, but it's loose. What you're aiming for, or as I've been told and read in books, is you're aiming for the crease to appear from the, the foot here all the way up to the end of the gaff. Once that crease is in, that means it's nice and tight. And that crease will get, when you're sailing, the wind will push the crease out and it'll get a quite a nice shape to it. So for now, it doesn't look very nice. I mean, it's different to Bermudan rigs, which are always looking ready set. This one looks a bit funny, but that's what you're after. So we've got the nice crease. And we'll just pull it in, lock it off. I can do this without sweating because the gaff is a lot, um, the mizzen is quite uh, easy sail. Also, I don't know if you can see, uh, if Paige looks at the top of the mast, if I pull it too much, you see, because the mizzen doesn't have a forestay, the more I pull, the more the mast actually bends towards it anyway. So there's only a, only a certain amount I can do this one. And then that's it set. Now what we do is tidy up, release the two topping lifts so they're not so much in the way, and we're good. I'll just tidy up these uh, halyards now and then we'll move on to the main. So it's quite easy to uh, smarten up these halyards, all I do is uh, roll them up like this 
and you put your arm through, grab, pull it back so you've got a loop and if you really want it to lock nicely, put it back over, grab that, pull it through and hook that bit on which makes it nice and neat, should never, well I've never had it come off then, as you can see they sit quite nicely like that now. So quickly do the topping lifts, there's one either side and we're just literally slacking them off, they've already gone quite slack because the sail's taking it, but we moved them off a little bit so they're out the way of the sail, just a bit and probably only do the one for now. It all depends on the, the uh, where you're sailing. On a run, you'd have them right off because the sail will be right out and they need to be slack. Close hold, you still have them slack because you don't want them interfering with the shape of the sail, but it doesn't have to be as slack. But that's why there's quite a bit of line on them, etc. So same again, we're just gonna take the sail ties off. It's, it's put away exact same way. It's uh, attached to the gaff, but I also include the uh, reefing pennants in a bit, so they're uh, not in the way. We'll just take the, uh, the sail ties off Looks a bit of a mess back here when I do, because all the sail starts to drop out. But once they're off, we can then hoist. It's as simple as that. So this, uh, the mainsail's a bit different to the mizzen, as we've got two ends to the throat halyard. It gives you a bit of extra purchase when pulling it up, but I'm probably going to change it over. It's a bit awkward, and you'll see why in a minute. But um, that's probably, I'm going to switch it to the same system on the mizzen but we'll just have a few more uh, blocks to give a bit of extra purchase than what's set up now. So here we are at the mast again, as you see the two halyards, these are the two we're after. We've got the peak here on the, in, uh, on the outside going towards the stern and then the throat here. But on this one, as you can see, we've got two ends. I'll see if I can pull them out a bit. If you were to pull this one and have this off the uh, cleat, you'd actually pull it through the block that I'll show you as it comes down. And this is one that's got two ends, so we only put some red in, so you only pull this side. And around this side is the other end, it's this one here. As you can see, we've got the same setup again, the red and the one we should pull. So that's, uh, that's how that one stands up, and that's why it's a bit awkward. So we'll start sending it up, because of course we've got to keep the peak in front of the throat. And that's where it gets a bit more awkward, because when it gets to a certain point, I have to switch sides. And as you watch me do it, you'll find out why. So of course, first thing we start with, is take them off the uh, the cleats, and again we'll uh, we'll start by sending the peak up a bit, so it's in front of the throat. Sorry, probably went a bit quiet there. So I've got to remember to keep looking at the uh, camera. So we'll send the peak up. Now this one's a bit more awkward because the um, topping lifts are actually further back than the gaff, so I have to do a bit of uh, get the gaff between them. There we go. So now it's going up right. So again we send up the uh, peak a bit, about there, and then we can send them both up. A bit more weight on this now, so it's a bit more effort, and I think this is why they had this system set up. So as you see, it's about to pass, you see the block coming down, that's the throat halyard. And again, we'll just tie that off there, the peak. So we can sort this out. So this is the throat halyard. As you can see, it's, uh, it goes through the blocks on the gaff and has two ends, and then these blocks attach to the uh, ends here. So as you pull this one down, this block comes down, as you can see, and that's why you've got the two ends. If I was to pull the red, you'd take it through the block and end up just leaving the block up there. So we've got this one down here now. We'll tie that off. And this is where we now have to swap sides as we have to carry the throat on the other side. But first, we need to get the peak far in front so it doesn't capsize. So we'll send the peak up a load more. Whew. Okay, and now we'll swap sides. So we're the other side now. As you can see, we've got the throat here and we're gonna carry it on. So we're gonna make this nice and tight and then we can go back around the other side again and carry on with the peak. But as you can see, I've gotta keep the peak in front. So I've had to do quite far so I can take this all the way. Again, you can see the block coming down. There we go. And same as last time, we'll now sweat this one to get it nice and taut. Like so, and then tie it off. 
Again, you're not going to get it bar tight like you can on um, Bermudans with winches, but it's tight enough for a gaff. Right, we're back this side again, and now we'll finish with the peak. And as you can now tell, this is why I want to switch around to the same system we have on the Mizzen, as it slows it down quite a bit. And if you're in high seas or anything, trying to sort this rig out, you only want it on this side. So I think I'm going to switch it to just the one, have the one there system. But anyway, we'll finish this off. Same again, we're going to keep pulling this up until it goes nice and tight and then we get a crease from the end of the gaff down to the foot here so there we go that's that and then a bit more you see the crease starts to appear we can sweat it a bit of course this one the mast isn't going to start moving in because it's stayed and then just tie it off so again we just tidy up the uh, halyards here putting them away nicely we would release the topping lifts but they're already quite loose and as there's no wind we're probably not going to get to sail anyway and uh, so we won't release them any more than this you have to remember when lowering the rig we have to the first thought in your head as Tom Godliffe would say is topping lifts so anything to do with this rig you think topping lifts because as soon as I release this sail with the topping lifts off it means the boom's going to drop down because there's no kicker like there are on Bermuda rigs so without the topping lifts the boom can well hit you on the head so if you slacken them right off, say you're running on a if, uh, sailing on a run, you want them right off. And then if you bring it in and drop the sail without putting the topping lifts back on, the whole thing's going to just drop down to the ground. So you have to always remember topping lifts. It's one of the most important parts. I'll just show you quick the staysail. It's quite simple. It's on its own boom. It's uh, currently put away here. I'll move that to the centre of the mast so it'll swing from there. And you, it's got a sheet there you can control just like any main boom. Uh, we'll send it out, we'll hoist it up, and then we'll put it away, just so you can see that. So I've just coupled the uh, sheet here down to the base of the mast. We're going to leave it about here, I think. So at the moment it'll just sit down. And we'll just tie it off here. And, uh, and then we'll hoist. And as we hoist it, the, uh, the staysail, that boom will come up. And then you can set, you know, close hold, etc. from there. And at some point I'm gonna, well over winter, buy, get some more blocks and I'm gonna rove this all the way back to the uh, cockpit so it can be controlled. At the moment, to reset the sail, you have to come forwards and do it here, where I'm gonna set it up that you can do it all the way from back in the uh, cockpit. So my staysail halyards, this one here, I'm just on the uh, ravel it here. We now need to slack it off because to stop it from hoisting, because I always have it set up, I've got a um, a piece of rope on the uh, on the forestay there that I connect it up to so that you can pull it up tight and it won't go. So at the moment, first thing we do is take that off. So we take that off and we just let it hang there, get out of the way, don't get in the way, and then we reattach the halyard. Just have a quick check, make sure the halyard's not uh, twisted, and it's all good. So this halyard is set, it starts at the very top, comes roves down through that block, back up to another block, and then down to my hands. So it gives me a bit of purchase, so I'm not just pull putting all my weight on, just pulling it up, it's got a few blocks. And you see it goes up nice and easy, and we'll just keep going. And then we get it, and then it'll start to uh, bring up the boom. Well again, what we're after is making the uh, loft nice and tight so just sweat it in a bit there we go tie it off and uh, make it neat so you see me make the the uh, halyards neat I'm not going to do that because we're just going to put it down in a minute as you can see it sits loose on this boom we can bring it in tighter at times when we need to but this one's been far, flying fine and what we're after is the loft back here being nice and tight against the full stay so that's that set and then of course for sailing we'd release the uh, sheet and set where we want it it's as simple as that coming down it's quite simple literally just remove the halyard from here and the weight will do it all for you it comes down quite nicely you just have to finish the last bit off by yourself And then if I was sailing and thinking I might need it again, I'd literally just put one or two sail ties on it, keep it neat and get it ready to go. But as I'm going to put away, I'll put it away fully. Um, but that's as simple as that one is. 
So I've reattached the halyard to the um, anchor point, I guess you can call it. As you can see now, I can pull it tight, put it out of the way without actually hoisting the sail up. So not ridiculously tight, but just enough that it's out of the way and then tie it off. And that's the sail at home kind of thing. All right, so now we'll throw out the foresail, but anyone who's sailed before, it's quite simple. You recognize it, it's just got a brass furler on it. So it works very much like modern foresails. The furling line going back to the cockpit and the two sheets. So take that off, pull it out, and then you can furl it away as you would a modern one. So the main difference of course, between this is the furling system is very much like a modern uh, Bermudan rig. Uh, the main difference, of course, is we don't have winches. We only have the cleats here. So to get that extra strength, we actually have a block set up on the sheet here. So the sheet comes back, sorry, when, when he's moved out of the way, the sheet comes down here, ends here on a block, and then we rove a, uh, a line through, starting near the cockpit, comes up through here and then down to the cleats. This is where we pull it from. Very much like the ones on the mainmast. So this is where the sheet starts, goes up through the block and comes back here and we use this, this centre cleat here. This is the furling unit. Like any furler, you just release that and it would let it feed out. There's no wind so it's not going to come out on its own. So it's just going to release a bit and I'll have to pull it out with the sheet. It's not going to go out perfect because of course the uh, about wind. So we'll just make sure that runs smooth. Pull out the uh, the sheet and there we go. So of course the sheet comes back. You then put it on the cleat to tie it off. And if you uh, really want to bring it in, you can sweat it in quite easily and tie it off. But without any wind, it's already fully out. Then we just tie it off. So when we're doing stuff here, uh, putting it away neatly, we'll do locking figure of eights. But when we're sailing, we only just do two figure of eights, like so, so that it's not locked. Because of course we want to be changing these quickly if we need to. Same as the main sheet and the mizzen sheet. You never lock them, you just want to be able to get to them quick. The furling away is as simple as can be. We've got the 6mm furler here. All we do is we pull on that, it'll furl up and release the sheet. So we want to keep a bit of tension on so it goes away neatly. It's not going to be so easy. It's normally helped by the fact there's some wind, but without any wind at all, it's quite a bit uh, harder. But we just keep a bit of tension on, furl it away. It goes away quite nicely. When we get to the right uh, point, we take it around a few times, and then we'll, there we go, and then we'll pull it back. So we'll just tie this off here, like so. And then that'll be pulled away neatly and then we can pull the sheets out to set it nice and neat and out of the way. So here we have the jib halyard. We just leave this alone because of being a furling unit, it gets all set, but it needs to be quite tight for the furler to work. So what we do is we hoist it up, get to a certain point, and then there's a loop in it here where we connect up a handy billy block and tackle here just to get that extra bit in. So that's why it looks a bit more complicated, but it's quite simple. Get that extra bit of a taut, tie it off, and then take in the slack that's been left and then it's nice and set. And that just gets left now for the sailing season because it's all set. But we can show you how this works. We'll do another video on actually um, when we lash all the sails on. We'll do that as a separate video of putting up both main, mizzen and all the other sails and how we connect them, how they're laced on, etc. But that will be a different video. So guys, that's our rig all set. That's the way I do it. I hope you enjoyed that. If you want to learn more, the best book I can recommend is Hand, Reef and Steer by Tom Conliffe. And, uh, and that's, that's all there is to it. So thanks for joining us.